We are surrounded by odds. I don't mean that in the Orwellian surveillance state sense of the word. I mean that we, the species, have managed to create a lot of electronic devices that can see and react to light. A few examples up here. The first is the television. And when you have a remote control and you press a button on that, the TV sees the beam that comes out of the remote and reacts accordingly. Whether that's change the volume, change the channel, make Netflix, whatever. A more complex example would be the man-made satellite. And man-made satellites nowadays have a great many electronic guides. And these satellites either look down below, things like weather and temperature patterns from year to year, or they look into the stars beyond to see what our cosmos is made. These eyes have allowed us to observe our natural world with unprecedented depth, accuracy, and across a wide range of fields. They benefit all of us. And what all these materials or all these devices have in common is a class of materials called semiconductors. And semiconductors are very useful. When they're hit with light, they generate charges. And these charges can be turned into a signal current, which tells you what you're looking The most common semiconductor is silicon, which I have pictured here. And it, like most common semiconductors, is inorganic. It's mined out of the earth, it is refined, and judging by what I saw before, it lives in many people's pockets right here. But there are some downsides to using silicon and other inorganic materials. Notably, there's the high energetic cost of processing. In order to use an inorganic semiconductor such as silicon or germanium, you have to refine it, and that involves high temperatures in excess of 1,000 C, very tightly controlled atmospheric conditions, and all these things require lots of energy to maintain and maintain well. There is an alternative. I work with organic electronics, which are solution processed. And what we work on in my lab is a slightly alternative version of a semiconductor. Much like silicon, ours respond to light by generating free charges. But unlike silicon and germanium, we can process ours in solutions. Specifically, I work with a class of materials called perovskites. And the highest temperature I've ever used in processing a perovskite is 115 C. It's a much easier energy budget to achieve. However, there's a drawback. Perovskites, due to their crystal structure, are good at generating charges, but really less good at moving them around. But what we have found a way to do in our lab is improve how they move. So what we do is we, we put our metal contacts down and we chemically treat these. And then we put down another organic semiconductor, which is good at moving charges, but less good at generating them. And then we put our perovskite on top. And using this, our perovskite generates its charges, and these charges we move through the other organic. And we've been able to increase our response to this by over a factor of 10. This technology is very, very important, and this goes a long way toward democratizing. Just think of all the things we can see. 